Alright now for question 8 Again we have two functions fx and gx with the respective domain So first of all part 1 is supposed to show by means of graphical argument or otherwise that f is not 1 to 1 This is a sine curve Okay and obviously sine curve is not 1 to 1 So all we have to do is just to sketch it out and to argue our case that, Okay now this is a sine curve Okay we only want it up to pi Oops so this is 1 pi this is half pi and this is maximum 1, minimum negative 1 and this is our y equals to sine 2x okay so this is not 1 to 1 obviously therefore it's the, the, the we answer the first part of the question simple and on part 2 are we supposed to for the do for the function of g no, no this is not g this is q qx okay which is sine 2x the other yada and the domain is slightly different from the original domain Okay, it says here that well the domain is a subset of from 0 to pi over 2 Okay, oh, I'm sorry, this is, should be pi over 2 So pi over 0 to pi over 2 is this curve here Okay, this part of the sine curve right, Which is as well not 1 to 1 yet Okay, not 1 to 1 So the whole idea is to how are you going to make it 1 to 1 Okay, S such that the Q inverse can exist Which means that, well, make your sine Make this part of the curve 1 to 1 Okay, so how we can do that? Well, let's think about this. Okay, we enlarge the curve a little bit. Okay, because we're only concerned with zero to power over two here. Okay, so this is zero to power over two is one. Now, in order to make this curve one to one, we know that hey, you know, if I were to chop it up here, okay, from zero to power over four, which means that the curve will now only take these values. Okay, this y values. Now this is one to one. Okay, so in order for our Q to be 1 to 1, S must be equal to, uh, well, from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, you can include both the values, 0 to pi over 4, because that was to give you 1 to 1. Right, so this, this part of the curve will be then 1 to 1 for this domain. Well, alternatively, of course, we can also say that, you know, hey, how about from pi over 4 to pi over 2? Well, it, it can still work, isn't it? I mean, from pi over 4 to pi over 2, this, this part of the curve, it is still 1 to 1. It is also 1 to 1. Okay? So, determine the maximum domain for S, uh, for which a Q inverse to exist, well, this or this. Okay? Hence, define correspondingly the Q inverse. Well, it is actually not that difficult, really. Okay, let's try to figure out. Now, Qx is equal to sine 2x okay for the domain of um, well 0 to pi over 4 okay so x is an element of all this all right now to, to find the inverse for this now the inverse exists because of this domain right so we let y be equal to sine 2x and therefore we know that sine inverse y is equal to 2x and therefore x is equal to half of our sine inverse y and therefore our q inverse x will be equal to half sine inverse x okay and the domain for our q inverse will be actually the range of our q and the range is actually from 0 to 1 and therefore the domain will be also from 0 to 1 okay so this will be the um, second part of the answer okay define it fully and this is what it's all about okay now depending on whether the domain is inclusive of 0 or pi over 4 okay um, this domain will then be uh, inclusive of 0 or 1 okay so since we include 0 and pi over 4 that means the values can be 0 and can be 1 as well okay now for part 3 of the question, define, uh, no not define, I'm sorry, explain why the composite functions fg exist, okay, and find the rule and range of it, okay, now let's move on, okay, fg, alright, so part 3, now we all know uh, that for fg to exist, okay, what must happen, well, the range of g must be a subset equal to the domain of f, Okay, and of course, what we would want to do is to go find out what's the range of g. So let's take a look at our function g. Okay, g is a quadratic equation, x squared plus 1, where x is 
from 0 to 1 so if you were to go to your GC and plot this well actually you don't even need to go GC to plot this you can plot this on your own right so um, when x is 0 y is 1 and when x is 1 y is 2 so it is here okay 1 to 2 that's all we need to know all right so the range of G is from 1 to 2 as we just talked about okay excluding 1 but including 2 all right and the domain of F okay what is our domain of F well the domain of F is given to us as 0 to pi okay and therefore the domain of F is 0 to pi let's write down okay from 0 to pi all right both inclusive there we go so can this be fitted into this well remembering that pi is actually 3.14 something okay so well, it can actually be fitted in right so we know that the range of g is a subset of the domain of f and therefore our fg does exist okay so the next thing we have to do will be to find the rule right so the rule of fg means we're going to substitute in g into f okay and that means to say our fg will be equal to sine 2x of which x will be then x squared plus 1 okay and the domain of fg will be the domain of g so the domain of g will be from 0 to 1 okay including 1 but excluding 0 so there's an equal sign here so this is our fg okay not difficult at all right now the next thing we will we will need to do will be to find the range of fg now because we know that you know that the range of g is a subset of the domain of f therefore the range of fg will also be a subset of the range of f but knowing this doesn't really tell us much as usual right so what we need to do is to go and do the tracing thing right we gotta go and trace either way or that you go and sketch this curve okay but i think it'll be more important for you to know the concept very well so fg means with g first then f okay because fg means you put the value into g first and then the resulting value we put into f okay so the shortcut is something like this now what we do know okay is this that everything that we map under g okay it will become the range of g and the range of g is from 1 to 2 okay so this is the range of g but the range of g is a subset of the domain of f and that's that's why it exists because the domain of f is so big right from 0 to pi so what we what in fact what we're most concerned with now is with this domain okay under f okay under the mapping of f what would be then my range okay so of course what we need to do is go figure out our f all right where, where is the f now as you can see f is our sine 2x okay so well let us have a quick sketch of the graph all right and we actually sketch it earlier on now we'll let us sketch it another time okay so this is to pi and this is 2 pi pi over 2 i'm sorry what i want to know is when i put in one okay one is somewhere here okay what is this value and when i put in two uh, again two is somewhere here okay what is this value so I want to know what is this range okay what is this range because this is the domain that I'm going to put in okay so this is the domain from 1 to 2 and therefore uh, this will be the range okay clear so it's actually not difficult to see that well this point is actually our sign 2 okay and this point here is actually our sine 4 right because since this is sine 2x so when x is 2 you do multiply by 1 you get sine 2 so what this tells us is that when I put in this values 1 to 2 I will get sine 4 to sine 2 as a range okay and I will include sine 4 but exclude sine 2 why? Well, because I include 2, right? 2 is inclusive and therefore sine 4 is inclusive. And uh, 1 is not inclusive and therefore sine 2 is not inclusive. This way. So therefore, 
we know that the range of FG is equal to sine 4. Sine 4 will be a negative number. Okay, we can actually check this out. Alright, so sine 4, sine 2. Okay, all this will be in radian, of course. Alright, we no longer play around with degrees that often. Okay, so this will be the final answer for the final part of this question.